Peace be upon you, ex-Muslim and free here. So in a few weeks, Muslims begin their most holy and important month of the year, Ramadan. But Ramadan and how it is practiced really shows just how corrupt Islam has become and how much hypocrisy is rampant in the Islamic communities. But just before I go to that, I have one question for you to think about, which my father used to ask himself quite a lot during Ramadan. If Satan is supposed to be locked up during Ramadan, and Satan causes sin, why does sin still happen in Ramadan? I think the answer to this is quite simple, but you have to be willing to face reality and not be afraid of the truth. So getting back to Ramadan, the idea behind Ramadan is to have solidarity with those people on this earth who do not have a lot and are unfortunate. But the real Ramadan is far from that, very very far. The real Ramadan is completely forgetting the poor people and instead having a big massive feast every single day for a whole month, whether it's in the masjid or uh, the person's house. This is why many Muslims gain weight during Ramadan because they eat even more than they otherwise would. To make matters worse, Muslims actually make fun of this hypocrisy. Weight gain mystery. Some people figure that since it's Ramadan, they're going to be fasting for 30 days and they're going to be losing weight. Unfortunately, many of us are gaining weight. Did I put on weight? Uh, be honest. <laughs> yeah, big time, bro. Woo! Not that honest. Do you know how we get fat during Ramadan? I'll tell you how we get fat during Ramadan. We cook all day and eat all night. That's how we get fat during Ramadan. Words of advice. If you can't say the words, I'm full, you're going to gain weight during Ramadan. Bro, what happened? Did you get married? Oh, this? Oh, no, brother. This is Ramadan, brother. Ramadan. Just to make sure that Muslims completely turn their back on the poor people and completely forget about them, all they do mainly during Ramadan is sleep in their comfortable bed with air-conditioned rooms because it's, <laughs> they, well, they claim it's too hard to stay up without eating. And it is hard. And maybe you will remember how hard it is to live without food next time you break your fast with a feast and stuffing yourself with food. Imagine for a second that you are Allah. You are all just, all humane, all loving and the most intelligent thing ever. You watch this world, you, you've been watching it for, for quite a long time too. Considering that there are 1 billion people who are on the brink of dying from starvation every single day, which, I mean, this is part of the Allah's test after all, would you really give heaven to an Ummah who turned their back on all of these people and selfishly ate and feasted and partied for a whole month every single year? And in your name too. If I was Allah, I wouldn't care. Okay, I wouldn't care how many fasts you did or how many times you prayed. For me, it would be irrelevant how many times you groveled and begged me for forgiveness. I would be more interested. It would be more important for me to see how many orphans did you bring a smile to? How many poor people did you bring a smile to? How many homeless people did you help? How much money did you donate to a poor family near you? Not how much money you gave to a mosque, which probably would fund terrorism anyway. Imagine what the world would look like if for one month all the Muslims, all the one billion Muslims took all the money that they would otherwise spend on Ramadan specific foods like dates, etc. and gave it all to Africa. Or instead of bowing down to the wall in their rooms five times a day, they went to a poor family and gave them clean drinking water five times a day. Imagine if all the Muslim doctors, instead of fasting for a whole month, spent all that energy and money in trying to find a cure for cancer voluntarily for a month. Imagine if all the Muslims, instead of fasting for a whole month, spent all that energy and money building shelters for the homeless in their city. What a different world would we live in. Islam is an orgy of hypocrisy and selfishness. Islam is a commitment 
to not caring about your fellow human being, especially if they are not Muslim. I hope you learned something today, and always know that my intention is not hateful, but of love and peace. But my message is going to be in your face because it's about time someone speaks up uh, against the hypocrisy that is so clearly obvious within the Islamic communities. Take care of my fellow brothers and sisters, whether Muslim or non-Muslim. And remember, God cares more about how many people you help than how many times you starve yourself.